NASCAR Muscle has arrived at Edmonton International Way for round number eight of the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series. 18 competitors are strapped in and ready to rumble in the main event as we dive into the second half of the season. Last time out, LeBay and Lapsevich each took victories in Saskatoon. Tonight, the Western Swing continues here at Alberta's only NASCAR-sanctioned track. The challenging quarter-mile bullring here in Wetaskiwin, Alberta, plays host to the Luxor 300. Welcome to Watasco in Alberta for race number eight of the NASCAR Pinty Series. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis is trackside for the Luxor 300. It's a great crowd. They've come out to the only NASCAR sanctioned track west of Ontario. Ronald and Loretta Thiering have put their heart and soul into this short track just south of Edmonton. And as they roll through the second half of our western swing, we see that Kevin Lacroix has a slim two-point lead over Alex LeBay. Caden Lapsovich third, DJ Kennington and LP Dumlin round out the top five. And Alex LeBay continued on his hard charge during time trials. The 24-year-old from Victoriaville, Quebec, posted the fast time capturing the E3 spark plugs pull. This man has been on a roll. He'll lead 18 cars to the green flag in this tough 300 lap event. Let's go trackside with our group from Bayer and Mayor Elliott with today's command. <laughs> The engines fire here on the front straightaway. The cars all gathered up behind the Leduc Chrysler pace car, preparing to get things underway. There you see a couple tough competitors and at the top of the points charts coming into this race. We'll ride on board with Brett Taylor in the number 25. We should have a great view there as Brett Taylor making his oval track debut. Also for the first time this year, we see Jamie Grizzick, one of the local drivers. And we'll take a look at tonight's Mopar starting lineup. Alex LeBay and Kevin Lacroix make up row number one. We'll look back to row number two. That's where we find Alex Tagliani and the 22 of Donald Tiege. Rounding out the top five, our first non-Quebec drivers, DJ Kennington in the 17. The 0-2 of Mark Dilley will start sixth. Row number four on the inside, Anthony Simone in the 95 and Caden Lapsovich in the 76. Back into row number five, LP Dumoulin in the number 47. There he is, Jamie Krizik in the 46, making his first start this year. Noel Dowler's in the five and Brett Taylor drives the 25. That's row six. Back to row number seven, Ian Admiral in the 83 and our Justin's Rookie of the Year leader, Adam Martin in the nine. And in the eighth row, it's Larry Jackson in the 27 and J.F. Dumoulin in the 04 and rounding out the field. Stefan Klim in the 54, daughter Destiny Klim in the 55. Solid field of NASCAR Pinty Series race cars ready to do battle as we ride on board with Noel Dowler. We'll take a look at tonight's E3 Spark Plugs race analysis, the main point. That'll make things interesting for sure as the cars work to get some heat in these Goodyear Eagle tires. We'll be riding on board, as we mentioned, with the 25 of Brett Taylor making his first oval start of the season. And before we get things underway, let's send it back down to Todd. A couple of stories to keep an eye on tonight, fellas, before we go green. The 46 of Jamie Krizik running his first event of the season and the first in his own equipment. It's been a bit of a learning process, but Jamie pretty happy with the car and looking forward, hopefully, to more events in the future. The other big story, the 27. Driver Andrew Ranger became ill with food poisoning during practice, got out of eel of the 27 Mopar Parts Dodge tonight. Larry Jackson, a steady shoe behind the wheel, and Jamie Krizik was atop the charts in practice for a lot of the session earlier today, Dave. We'll be keeping an eye on both those cars as the field rounds turn number four. Green flag up in the air, and we're underway here at Edmonton International Raceway. Starting the race on cold Goodyear tires, these drivers really have to be careful. Much the same weather as we saw at our last stop in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Very, very warm here in Edmonton and sunny. This track has been baking in the heat all day. A lot of bright sunshine is door handle to door handle. Kevin Lacroix and Alex LeBay, neither driver giving an inch. Great little track where you see a lot of side-by-side -side action. And look at Lacroix up on the outside as LeBay uses the rumble strip on the lower part of that corner to try and get that car to turn. 
and racing side by side like this allowed Alex Tagliani to be right up in the mix as well. When you're that close to someone, Dave, those rumble strips can be your worst enemy because they'll spit you right up into the car on the outside. You're looking a little bit further back to the 22 and the 02. Donald Tiege up on the outside of the 02 of Mark Daly. Now it looks like the outside groove falling off a little bit as Lacroix ducks down into second spot. Some great work by the crew chief, Don Thompson Jr., and the spotter on the 74 to get him an opening to pull down ahead of Alex Tagliani in the 18. Everybody is chasing the Can-Am Ford fusion of Alex LaBay in the early going. This is that battle for fifth that I mentioned. Mark Dilley is inched ahead of the 22 of Donald Teach as we ride on board the 02 Leland Ford. And that car was atrocious in Saskatoon for Dilly. He said he thought he was going to knock the wall down. He was pushing so badly. The car looks good right now, and this is the kind of racetrack Mark Dilley excels on. A tight track with lots of braking. Alex Tagliani quietly sitting there in third spot. You saw Donut on the side of the door already in the low Zeppi pen. Dodge Challenger. He maintains his spot there at the front of the field. We ride on board with Caden Lapsovich, who's following LP Doolin around the racetrack. This is a battle for the ninth position as Donald Teague having a look to the inside of Mark Dilly. They make contact. Oh, and Dilly had to grab a handful of wheel to keep that car straight. A battle for fifth spot. Teach was super quick at our last stops in Saskatoon, and there he takes advantage. A little bump, get underneath the O2, and that's really what you have to do here in Edmonton. You have to try and move that car in front of you until it starts going off and handling. You know, it's going to happen all night long. Whoa, that was close for the race leader, Alex LeBay, trying to get around Destiny Klim. I think even on a tight racetrack like this, though, you don't use that aggressive a bump until the second or third attempt to pass somebody. So Wilson, wow! Whoa, big problems, Klim goes around and Lacroix! Significant contact for Kevin Lacroix. You can see the hood buckled on the 74. He had nowhere to go. Caution is out, obviously, as the 55. Look at the right side of the car. Don Thompson Jr. telling their spotter to look at the right side of the car. Here we have a look. Contact, obviously, with LeBay. Lacroix had nowhere to go. In fact, he was getting a push from DJ Kennington. Now let's ride on board Lacroix. Backed out as much as he could. You could hear the engine bog right down. The car on pit road, Todd Lewis is standing by. 74 arrives along pit road, right front fender damage, lots of Bayer Bond, lots of tape. They want to clean that grill, make sure there's plenty of airflow, and Kevin Lacroix will be back in the fight. As NASCAR official Sam Putnam getting down on his knees, they want to make sure nothing is dragging under the car and nothing is leaking out of the car so it's safe for him to go back onto the racetrack. Brett Taylor also getting an adjustment. Yeah, it's taking the opportunity, this first caution here in Edmonton. Alex LeBay, some paint on the nose of the 32, but he's still out in front in the early going. The Luxor 300 presented by Bayer is brought to you by Mopar. We built it, we know it. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. Already on lap 37 for restart number one. I expect this won't be the last restart of the day, but Alex LeBay will set the pace out of four. 17 cars on the lead lap. The free pass going to the 54 of Stefan Klim as they get back up to speed. It really doesn't take long to click off laps on this tight bull ring. No, it sure doesn't. And watch Alex LeBay. He got out all by himself. See how quickly he can pull away. And it looks like DJ Kennington has broken into the second position all by himself. Himself. One car out of the race is Destiny Klim, pulls behind the wall. There is a good look at your race leader, now with a few car lengths lead, but the battle for third is heating up. Well, Alex Tegley, and he's trying to get to the bottom of the racetrack, and he gets down in front of the 95 of Anthony Simone, but look at Simone, he is not giving up the fight. Now, he's not going to want to let that 18 get down there. He'll keep his nose in there as long as he can, and there, that's what happens. Little contact, the 18 slides up the racetrack. See, and that's the kind of bumping I think you will see is LP Dumoulin doing the same thing. Not so much hit a car to knock them out of the way, but get your nose into a hole. Let the car on the outside 
inside try to close the door. They're actually going to run into your front bumper and slide up the track, just like Tagliani is doing now. And it's cost them three spots so far, and there's more to come. for Noel Dowler in the five. You can tell by the accent. He comes from Mobile, Alabama, former racer in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. He's a driver coach as well as a crew chief helping Noel Dowler in Saskatoon and again here in Edmonton. And you can hear how he's trying to keep the driver calm and tell him exactly what to do. He's got Noel in the ninth position right now. And whether these drivers want to admit it or not, a good spotter is like a, like a dad or a mom holding the back of your bicycle when you're just taking the training wheels off. They reassure you, they calm you to do what you, you think you should be able to do to begin with. And we got some rough action on track. The 04 of JF Dumoulin slides up the track off the bumper of the 74 of Lacroix. Dumoulin currently in 12th spot in the Spectra Premium Dodge. And we heard a little more spotter action there. These radios are lit up tonight. There's a lot of communication going on back and forth. And as I say, it's always reassuring. It's always positive, like we heard with Noel Dowler and Rick Crawford. It's weird to look at that number 27 Mopar Dodge and not think Andrew Ranger is behind the wheel, but it's Larry Jackson's having a great run, sitting in 10th, but he's got company, and here comes Lacroix. Lacroix right down to the bottom of the racetrack. Nice pass. Larry Jackson gives him the room he needs. I don't envy any driver having to get into the race car that's set up for Andrew Ranger. There is nobody that drives with his driving style. It's a good chance you can run on the outside and you'd probably run pretty well because that's where usually Andrew Ranger finds himself on an oval. You're absolutely right. And look who's found himself on the wrong side of this oval. It's Anthony Simone in that 95 sliding backwards. Notice that? The 18 on the inside, and he wasn't given any favors earlier on in the race, and now he's not paying any favors back as Anthony Simone tried to get back down, and he can't. He's going all the way back from third. Looks like he'll land in about eighth spot. Race car drivers have a great memory for that kind of thing. <laughs> Stefan Klim on the inside, the number 54, trying to tuck out of the way of the lead lap cars. Good look at Keaton Laksevich, as we mentioned last race, still looking for sponsorship on the 76. Needs some help to finish the 2017 season. Jamie Krizik in the 46 on the inside of Larry Jackson for the 11th spot. Battles all the way around this racetrack and tucked in behind the 25 of Brett Taylor from Calgary, Alberta. You're doing it right, doing a nice job. Brett Taylor's never raced on an oval before, and he's out there with some pretty steep competition. Having a decent run, sitting in 12th spot. Back up to the front, though. Battle for fifth. The 18 of Alex Tagliani hounding the 0-2. Avenue Auto Parts, Ford Fusion of Mark Dilley. Caden Lapsovich is in there, too. Lapsovich coming off a win in Saskatoon. And we're back to the leader, Alex LeBay. DJ Kennington about a car length and a half off the back bumper, so not quite pressuring LeBay, but showing that he can turn laps equally as strong as the leader. And here's Kevin Lacroix to the inside of Noel Dowler. Lacroix is stout, so it's quite obvious that car has only suffered some body damage after the run-in with the lap car of Destiny Klim in the early going of this race because he has really lost nothing coming up through this field. One of my favorite parts about our NASCAR Pinty Series race cars, Dave, you don't get an arrow push in one of our cars. <laughs> you can crinkle a bumper and a fender. Your day's not over. And now Lacroix all over the back end of the 95 of Anthony Simone. Back up at the front, though, you see your leader is Alex LeBay in the Can-Am Ford Fusion. But how about second spot? You saw a flash of the 17 of DJ Kennington as the two come into lap traffic or racing side by side. Adam Martin in the Johnsonville number nine. JF Dumo in the Spectra Premium 04. This actually works against DJ Kennington because he'll have to fall back and battle them himself. Well, they managed to get sorted out. Now Dumoulin comes down in front of the 17, so that's going to affect DJ Kennington in his run to try and catch the leader. Martin gets up on the outside, letting the leader go by. So seeing the blue flag, acknowledging it, and getting out of the way, and now it looks like Dumoulin up on the outside as Kennington comes through. 
So Kennington clears Doolittle. You can hear JF burp the throttle a few times. That car not handling well. One car that is handling well, the 32 of Alex LeBay. He leads the way in the Luxor 300. Welcome back to NASCAR Binti Series Racing on TSN, where at Edmonton International Raceway as Vader presents the Luxor 300. Alex LeBay and his Can-Am Ford leads, while DJ Kennington from St. Thomas, Ontario, follows along in second spot, with LP Dumoulin chasing in third. LP Dumoulin looking strong, and there's a good look at the 46 of Jamie Krizik, the 9 of Adam Martin, and the 25 of Brett Taylor from nearby Calgary, Alberta. Mentioned the nine about a Martin the Johnsonville Ford Fusion sitting in 13th spot. And Dave, unfortunately, problems for one of the local drivers, Noel Dower in the Emco number five Dodge. He has been black flagged. There's smoke coming out of the right rear wheel. Well, this has not been a good Western tour for Noel Dower. Todd Lewis is down in the pits. Yeah, the five answers the black flag, and they're along pit road trying to get the car up in the air. They're looking towards the rear end. They believe that is where the source of that smoke is for Noel Dowler. Tough break, ran strong in Saskatoon for a time. Had a pretty good car here tonight, too. That's his dad, Kevin Dowler, sitting up on top of the box, looking over and watching as the work happens. But unfortunately, quick laps here. Noel Dowler is going to go down many, many laps while they try and figure out what's wrong. If there's one bright side, Noel Dowler has a big go-kart race this weekend as well. He's helping to promote. He'll be racing there tomorrow. Battle for seventh spot as Kevin Lacroix continues his march to the front. The bumper-to-bumper -to -bumper total lubricants. Dodge Challenger now tucks to the inside of the Leland 0-2 of Mark Dilley. Dilley's going to give him lots of room again relatively early. We're just over 100 laps into this 300-lap event, so a little bit of give and take can happen. He's giving him plenty of room, but not all the room. You notice Lacroix slid up on him a little bit there. I don't think Dilley was very happy. He's driving that car hard. I think he might want to give a nudge to the 70 for say next time I'm going to give you lots of room and you can take it all but don't take an extra inch. You mentioned Noel Dowler and we got problems on the front chute right in front of us the 54 of Stefan Klim goes around stopped in the grass so off the racetrack which is a good news but the caution will fly. It could be bad news for Stefan these grounds are so wet from torrential rain through the night he might have trouble getting going once again. See the car sliding off the corner some help from Anthony Simone. Anthony Simone needed a yellow flag to keep from going a lap down. He might have just made himself one. And it's not a pit stop race. That, that doesn't mean you can't stop for some adjustments. The 27 of Larry Jackson. Down pit lane, so is the 04 of J.F. Dumoulin and the 83 of Ian Adler. So these cars have all been serviced, got some adjustments, but Dave, here at Edmonton International Raceway, there's a mini cup class. We saw them race earlier on today. There's a huge influx of young competitors. They're all between 8 and 15 years old, and there's a lot of female drivers. And, and Western Canada does have a strong field of female stock car racers. Some of that might be because of young women like Erica Thiering, Destiny Klim, uh, Chantel Calica, and uh, Shania LaForce as well. You know, and they, they see other young women doing it and succeeding. It, it's really grown well. It's exciting to see fantastic racing. As we continue under caution, we'll take a quick break. Alex LeBay continues out in front. The sun is starting to set here at Edmonton International Raceway's 18 NASCAR late models get set for the third restart of the evening. Alex LeBay and his Can-Am Ford Fusion leads the Loxer 300. DJ Kennington on the outside of the front row, a pair of second place finishes in Saskatoon. He is dying to get back to the winner's circle, Dave. How about L.P. Dumoulin and the WeatherTech Dodge? He got all the way down onto the pit lane exit there, the concrete patch to the inside of the corner, but holds on to that inside lane. L.P. Dumoulin, he has really come on strong in the oval races. Billy Burns is crew chief working with that driver and working on getting a setup that makes him comfortable, but he's got some company in behind. Somebody is saying, get up and go, LP, and it's Donald Teach. Yeah, Donald Teach broke to go into the corner and then accelerated again, as though he thought he could go in even deeper. So they are stacked up behind Caden Lassovich with the 76, just ahead of a couple of great side-by-side -side battles. And 
past the 18 of Alex Tagliani again up on the outside looking for that opening to get down. He may have it here. He does as he'll tuck in front of the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. Mark Dilley couldn't quite get there. But there's a driver who you know is itching to get to the halftime break, make the adjustments he needs on the race car, and I think we'll see the O2 car really come to life. You can hear the, uh, the sounds of the engines as we ride on board with these drivers. Take a listen. J.F. Dumoulin, he had to burp the throttle, he hit it, let off, hit it, let off. When you're fast, like the 22 of Teach, the 76 of Lapsovich, you hit it once in the right spot, and you can roll into the throttle, and the car does what you want it to. Even there, you have to come onto the throttle so gently so you don't break those rear tires loose as Teach gets into the back of the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin once again. He is hounding the driver of the WeatherTech Dodge. And this is more what I expected as we look at Kevin Lacroix, that hood still flopping a little bit from damage earlier on. You don't give that big shove until you're a few laps into the battle and you really need to go. You can, but it's a long race if you're going to drive like that. You wait until you get really frustrated yep. and then you make your move. Well, we have a look right here. Teach looking to the inside there. See, just a nudge. Just a nudge. LP up the racetrack. That's a great short track pass. And that is a battle for third and it's going to hurt LP Dumoulin. He's trying to get in. Got into the side of the 76 of Lapsovich, but look at him. All the way back behind the 18 of Alex Tagliani before he's able to get back down. And the difference between that pass and what we saw earlier, Dave, he tried lap after lap, showed his nose, showed his nose, couldn't get the break. Just a nudge into the corner got him everything he needed. It's a battle for 12th on the racetrack between the Spectra Premium Dodge, the 04 of J.F. Dumoulin, and the number 25 of Brett Taylor. I'm really impressed with what Brett Taylor's been able to do in that CBR T4. He's keeping his nose clean, Dave. The big difference between this and road course racing, on this oval, you do not get to rest. Under caution a little bit, but under green, you are constantly having to do something to work that race car. He's moving up to the outside, the 22 of Donald Teach, so that car's starting to loosen up. Maybe can't quite stick on the bottom as he could earlier on in the run, and Caden Lapsovich smells blood in the water. He's gonna make a move to the inside this lap. I think you're exactly right. Just eases that nose in where he wants it. We're almost to the halftime break, so tire wear definitely a factor right now. We got a car slow in turn number three. It's the 83 of Ian Admiral, and there you see him slow up against the wall as the caution comes out once again. Not sure what could have gone wrong with that race car. He just drifted to the top of the racetrack, and I think I see the problem, I believe that's the drive shaft hanging out. You could just see it off of the rear wheel. And NASCAR is right now discussing taking the halfway break right now during this caution. The eighth race of the NASCAR Pinty Series rolled into Wetasco in Alberta, where the racing fans absolutely love their NASCAR. It's been a battle up front all evening long. Tight between the top three, and Destiny Klim had her difficulties in her second start, and her groundhog cam took its lumps. Oh, that was unfair. It still works, though. It's okay. So they are going to take their halfway break as you see the cars down pit lane. Todd? And the clock starts on the break. Fuel going in first on the 32. There will be some minor adjustments for handling, but Alex will be very happy with the car. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix had that incident earlier. Got the hood taped down. Fuel going in. Also, we'll get tires and some minor adjustments. 17 of DJ Kennington, pretty happy with his car running in second. Said he's just a little bit loose off. The 22 reported to be just a little bit tight. They, too, will make minor adjustments when we return to action. Which one of those minor changes will make the biggest difference? We'll find out in the second half of the Luxor 300 here at Wetaskiwin. Wetaskiwin, Alberta, Alex LeBay leads the Luxor 300 with DJ Kennington and Donald Teague in tow as we get set for another restart, the fourth restart of the evening here on this tight third of a mile bull ring. Alex LeBay has really been uncontested, except for those laps at the very beginning when Kevin Lacroix raced to his outside, and DJ Kennington immediately to the bottom of the 
track. Yeah, you could see that inside groove was just packed nose to tail of cars, and now Kevin Lacroix trying to do the same thing, but he's trying to make a hole to get down there. All these cars on fresh tires. Alex Tagliani, he's rolling down pit road, but we haven't had word from NASCAR that any penalties have been given out. He didn't stop in his pit box back on the racetrack, Dave. And didn't lose a lap, so he'll tag on to the end of the field. But back at the front, it is still LeBay. This is a battle for fourth spot. you got TG in there. You've got Mark Dilley. And you've got the 74 of Kevin Lacroix up on the outside. And Lacroix is trying everything to get back to the bottom. He'll slide down just in front of Jamie Krizik. must be frustrating as a driver. You're caught in that inside lane and you're just waiting for the driver in front of you to open up that door just a little bit. When everybody's got brand new Goodyear Eagles, that's a difficult task. You just have to wait. They're all pretty good. Here's Caden Lapsovich, fairly deep in the field. He's battling with Anthony Simone for the eighth position. Lapsovich on the inside. Simone. The spotter telling him he's clear in behind Caden Lapsovich and he can tuck back down under that inside group. Great to see Robbie Thompson at the racetrack, Dave. He's had some, some health issues the last few weeks, but he's made this trip out here and I know the team appreciates the help. You saw a quick flash of red in behind the 74 of Lacroix. There he is, Jamie Krizik, having a wonderful ride here today, keeping the nose of that car clean, which is all important. Bye. second. All behind him, he got room. Clear, clear, clear. I believe that's Donnie Reinhardt telling DJ Kennington Teach was inside of him. He just got lucky because there was room to get back down to the bottom. There goes Lacroix around Dilly. Battle for fourth spot. Give it to Lacroix that time. I was going to say the 17 of DJ Kennington that was sitting in second for so long. He had two really good races in Saskatoon, and now he's having another great run here at Wetaskiwin at Edmonton International Raceway. You're absolutely right. Here goes Caden Lapsovich for another position. He'll go to the inside of LP Dumoulin. LP has had a good race car, but give Lapsovich seventh and put Dumoulin back to eighth. Anthony Simone, another one of those drivers, had a pretty solid western swing, but look, here comes Lacroix. So fast in qualifying and in practice all day long today. Now picks up the third spot. That car is a little bit beat up. It just is cosmetic because that thing is on rails here in the second half. It's, I, I don't know if I'd say beat up. It's taken a couple of whacks from the <laughs> ugly stick. But, but the wheels are pointed in the right direction and Kevin's doing a great job driving it. There goes Dilly to the inside of Kennington. Possibly the Castrol team has made changes that really hasn't suited the driver of the 17 as DJ Kennington has gone from second and continues to fall back. He's now in fifth spot. Well, we can see much of this racetrack now in the shade. We can also see Donald Teach closing in on Alex LeBay in a battle for first. Yeah, Alex LeBay not quite as dominant as he was in the first half, and now it looks like Dilly up on the outside is Kennington coming back for fourth. So looks like the 17 has settled down a little bit. Jamie Krizik, can he dig hard enough to get to the inside? Mark Dilly seems content up in the high groove. And Donald Teach has arrived at the back bumper of LeBay. Contact between the two leaders and Teach goes to the outside. You saw the Can-Am Ford Fusion get loose off the corner. Donald Teach went to the outside. And that's where he stays right now. And he's making a run of it up to the door. The 32. This is a battle for the race lead. We have not seen anybody make a pass to the outside unless they were going around lap traffic. Oh no. my goodness, they're going to squeeze three wide. Stephen Clem on the inside. You saw pieces of body panels flying out onto the racetrack, and caution now flies. And it looks like it is for that debris. I can't believe Alex LeBay, one of our most conservative racers, chose to go three wide up the middle, contact with the 22 of Donald Teach, and then I believe made contact with the 54 of Stefan Klim as well. Pit road is hectic, Todd. Yeah, a number of drivers taking this caution period to make adjustments. The 18, one of them on the right side after their penalty, making a little adjustment. The 17, a little too tight, they're also making an adjustment. We continue under caution, but we have a brand new leader here in the Luxor 300. Donald Teach leads Alex LeBay. 
Welcome back to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross. Up in the booth, Todd Lewis is trackside. As we get set for restart number five, the number 22 of Donald Teach will lead him to green for the first time this evening. Donald Teach sets the pace down into turn number one. Look at LeBay taking a really big arc into the corner, trying to take all the space he can, keep that momentum going. Look at LeBay on the outside, nosing into the lead. He's found something up there as no other driver has been able to do. But can he stick it out for a number of laps? short answer, Dave, is no. <laughs> Those obviously. are really good race cars he's battling with. And LeBay's doing something he hasn't done all night long, and that's chase another car. That's true. Now under 100 laps to go here in the Luxor 300, and look at who's in front of Alex LeBay, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Remember how close they were in points coming into this one. Two points separated the top two. There's Scott Stackley, team owner of the number 22, looking on as Donald Teach leads the way. Scott Stackley still very active in these race cars. Not only a team owner, as DJ Kennington gives a little bump and run to the number 95 of Anthony Simone. That's uh, seventh spot Simone was in. Give it now to DJ Kennington. There's Larry Jackson in the Mopar 27. We haven't talked a whole lot about him since earlier in the race. Sorry, right at the beginning of the race. But he's in the top 10. Jamie Krizik right behind. We've got a battle for the lead. Kevin Lacroix to the inside of Donald Teach. And they'll go side by side down the back straightaway. You know what I'm watching, Dave, is Teach trying to battle on the high side. We saw that car work very well. It looks like these drivers were able to follow each other for four or five laps and really get a feel for where they can make a move. We saw Teach do it to LeBay. Now we saw Lacroix do it to Teach. Teach is trying to arc that car way up on the outside, but Caden Lapsovich has got this group as well. In the number 76, he's parked himself right on the back bumper of the 32. And he is right up under the rear deck lid of Alex LeBay. Should Teach start to slide back, Caden is not going to let him down. Contact. They may you saw smoke from those two cars as Teague gets back in behind the 74 in second spot down to that all-important inside lane. Now Caden Lapsovich, once he's ahead of LeBay, but a car length off the back of Donald Teague. So we're starting to see who can keep this race pace up and who's really setting the pace at the other end of the top 10. Look at this battle between Larry Jackson, Jimmy Krizik in the 46, Anthony Simone in the 95, and Alex Tagliani in the 18. They're all battling for eighth. Look at the 22 get crossways off of turn number four, but he manages to hang on to it. We ride on board with your race leaders. We'll take a break. What a race here at Edmonton International Raceway on TSN, and welcome back to stop number eight for the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Luxor 300, and it's heating up again at the front. Donald Teach in the 22 to the inside of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. I've never seen anything like this, Dave. Normally, when you've got a good car and you get a good run, you get to the front, you pull away a little, you set the pace. Right now, you get to the front, and it's a recipe to be free trade. Lapsovich happily sitting in third there. Now he's got company in the 32 of Alex LeBay. You remember, Lapsovich gave LeBay a little bit of a shove out of the way, and here comes LeBay straight back at him. Yeah, LeBay to the bottom of the racetrack. Lapsovich will have to get down before Dumoulin and the WeatherTech 47 gets there. Riding on board Lapsovich, and now LeBay. I love that shot on the 32 of Alex LeBay. You can see him in the cockpit. Another battle for the lead. And here comes Lacroix back on the inside. So he'll take over top spot once again. And the sun's gone down far enough that I wonder if that tinted face shield starts to get on his nerves or if he'd like something clear. Here's a great battle of the Johnsonville number nine and the Mopar 27. That's a battle for 11. Larry Jackson up on the outside of Adam Martin. Martin, as we mentioned a couple times, the leader in the Johnson, or the Johnston's Rookie of the Year battle. 
It's okay. You can say Johnson. They'll, they'll, <laughs> say they'll appreciate yeah, the mention. absolutely. His teammate, Mark Dilley, in the 0-2, battling alongside the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Battle for seventh spot. Tagliani has the inside, but Dilley is putting up a fight upstairs. And this battle has been going on for a few laps. Tagliani got to the inside of Dilley, but he can't get around him. Tag is awfully crossways off of turn number four on the inside. The leader, though, continues to be the 74 of Kevin Laquan. This is the longest the leader has held that spot in the last couple of laps anyway. You're, you're absolutely right. And as you can see in front of the leaders, as we look back at Dilly and Tagliani, synchronized racing around the racetrack, we're about to see some live traffic for our race leaders. That will mix things up for sure. Teach right on the back bumper, the 74 of uh, Kevin Lacroix. Not quite yet using that bumper, but ready to in the event he needs it. You know, when Teach drives the car hard, you can see him slide up the racetrack a lane. He's not driving quite as hard. He's able to keep the car at the bottom. And there he just gave a bit of a touch to 74 Lacroix. Slides Lacroix up the racetrack, and now he'll use him up a little bit, coming out of turn number four. But when Teach doesn't overdrive the car, he's able to keep it pinned right to the inside. Riding on board, Alex LeBay can hear he's riding the throttle, throttle gingerly, not spinning the tires. He'll move to the inside of the 74. Lap traffic on the inside, though. Stephen Klim in the 54, but three Quebec drivers battling very, very hard at the front of this field. Well, Alex LeBay has already shown he will go three wide if the opportunity arises. Kevin Lacroix, the right thing to do is stay as close to the 54 as he can. Unbelievable racing at Edmonton International Raceway. We'll be back to see how it unfolds. needs to open an office in Wetaska in Alberta because three Quebec natives are making a home at the front of the field here at Edmonton International Raceway in the Luxor 300. Don't speak too fast, Dave. There's Caden Lapsovich from Grimsby, Ontario, breaking up this Quebec top five. Right behind him from Trois-Rivières, Quebec, is L.P. Dumoulin. So Lapsovich, the only Ontario driver in the top five. 40 laps to go. We've had three different leaders for 12 lead changes so far this evening. Lasovic was trying to find an opportunity amidst the lap cars to make a move on Lacroix. That didn't work. He had to fall in line. LP Dumoulin right behind him going to try to get through there as well. And up front, Donald T just doing a great job of maneuvering through slower traffic. Kevin Lacroix continues to be all kinds of loose off turn number four. And now look, Caden Lasovic is right there. I've seen that every lap out of turn four. The front straightaway is very much not a straightaway at all, but Kevin Lacroix is not able to get the power to the ground. You do that for a couple of laps, it's not going to get better. It'll keep getting worse as he loses the ability to get forward traction, and it's going to be a tough 40 laps for uh, for Kevin Lacroix. 37 laps, I'm sorry. Keaton Lapsovich got tired of peeking through that open door. He decided to just barge his way through when the crack opened up. So Keaton Lapsovich now up into third spot. You can see the top two just ahead of the lap car of Larry Jackson. The 27 Mopar Dobbs driven by Larry Jackson here today. He's continuing to be in 11th spot. And we're hearing race officials on the radio talking to these drivers at the front saying be mindful of the rough driving drivers. It's they have their lines. You can get away with some pushing and shoving, but there is a limit, and Trevor Hamby, the race director, just came on and gave a warning to all of these spotters to talk to their drivers. There's a big push. Lapsovich gets crossways, and here comes a couple drivers through. What Kevin a save. Lacroix gave him a big handful of bumper there off the turn, and you're right, Lapsovich did a great job saving that race car. Let's have another look. There's Lacroix up on the back quarter. He didn't give him much of a chance to gather that up. Let's look back. Couple hits. Pretty aggressive short track move there. Now Caden Latsvich doing the same thing. Oh my goodness! Black flag coming out to Kevin Lacroix for rough driving. Well, they got the warning and now Lacroix is going 
going to accept oh. that black flag right away and try to dive to the pits, but did he get there in time? No, he went right by the commitment cone. You've got to get to the bottom of the yellow line before the yellow line starts, and we're hearing that over the radio. So he's being given two penalties right now, one for rough driving and one for passing the commitment line, and now Sam Putt, the NASCAR official, standing directly in front of the race car. And this has huge point implications. Remember, he was your points leader coming into this race, just two points up on Alex LeBay, who's now at the front of the field, sitting in second spot. And Dave, I can't remember a time when a rough driving penalty was assessed when nobody was spun out or wrecked. Well, they did give the warning saying, mind your P's and Q's at the front of the field, and then it happened as we watched this battle for third. Caden Lapsovich gets around the WeatherTech 47 of LP Dumoulin. You hear the rhythm these drivers get into, getting down into the corners, and look at the gap between Lapsovich in third and Donald Teach and Alex LeBay in first and second. We are down to the closing laps, just 23 laps to go when they cross the line this time. Should mention, too, the 74 Kevin Lacroix back out on track, two laps down, currently sitting in 13th position. He's got a lot of work to do, and he's going to get a caution here. Oh, that's going to be interesting. The leaders, the leaders were involved in that yellow flag because they had to split Anthony Simone. We'll see where the officials score this race lineup because you can see LeBay. LeBay being shown as the leader in the rule, Dave. If you have to break your racing line in a yellow flag, you fall back in line wherever you resume your position in the racing line. So LeBay stayed in the racing line to the inside at the last second. Teach Donald Teach to the there. outside. Don Thompson Jr. still arguing with Jeff Wilcox about the call on Kevin Lacroix. What a turn of events. Well, we've got a new leader. Alex LeBay will pace the field back to green when we return here on TSN. Spotters standing tall over this bull ring of a track, this quarter mile track south of Edmonton. Alex LeBay is your leader here in the Luxor 300, presented by Bayer. Just seven laps to go. And Scott Steckley, the team owner of the 22, talking to the officials, wanting an explanation on how they determined the race order. He's not going to win this battle. Alex LeBay leads the way. Well, your starting position here means so much the 676 of Kate Lapsovich. And the time is running out, just six laps to go. Lapsovich down low, Donald Teach well up onto the outside. Look at how rough it is deeper in the field as DJ Kennington muscled his way back down in behind the 18 of Alex Tagliani. You don't often see Mark Dillon. Oh, we got one around. One around. That's the 25 of Brett Taylor. Still under green, five laps to go. Taylor refires. Wow, nice job by Brett Taylor to get that car going. Once again, he'll fall back in line. We are still under green with four laps to go. Teej up on the outside is company and Caden Lapsovich, but does Lapsovich have enough to make a move on the inside? Boy, it doesn't look like Caden has a whole lot left. I want to see if Teej can catch the 32. How about the 18 of Alex Tagliani after rolling down pit road earlier on in the second half, the Lowe's EpiPen dodge inside the top five. It's a battle, but out in front, Alex LeBay leads by a couple of car lengths. Two more, that's two more laps to go. Teej trying to hold off the 76 of Lapsovich for second spot. LeBay will see the white flag. One more lap to go, and now it looks like the win is all but LeBay's, and the battle is for second. Lapsovich trying to get to the inside of Teej. Through for turn number four for the final time. He won one of them in Saskatoon. He'll pick up the win here in Wetaskiwin. LeBay in the 32, followed home by the 22 of Donald Teach and Caden Lapsovich rounds out the top three. What a race! What battles at the top of this field! That was unbelievable as we ride on board Alex LeBay. That was the first time I saw him get loose was going into turn one on the cooldown lap. How about some donuts to celebrate a hard-fought victory for the driver of the Can-Am Ford Fusion. Have a look at this top 10. Great job by Tagliani to fight back to fourth. Simone hung in there a couple of spills for eighth, and Adam Martin rounding out the top 10. And a big turn of events in the points. You see Kevin Lacroix coming home in ninth. Let's go down to victory lane. And Alex LeBay climbing out to 
stand up on top of that number 32 car for the third time this season, victorious. Congratulations from a huge contingent of team. You had to work for this one, as you said, top five in every race so far this year and your third win of the season. Oh, it's, a, it's an awesome year for all our cat crewmen. That one was tough. We, we led a lot early and uh, the guy, there was a lot of guys behind me. I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of speed, so I had to work really hard. I mean, uh, can thanks I got here. Everybody raced me clean on our track. That's uh, real good short track racing. Alex LeBay victorious again. We'll take a look now at the shakeup in points. As we mentioned, Lacroix finishing ninth, now 10 points back of Alex LeBay. And you've got Caden Lapsovich in third, 31 points back, and then DJ Kennington, LP Dumlin tied for fourth, 38 points back. They're still in contention. That's a big smile from oh, yeah. the, on the face of Donald Teach. What a race you drove tonight. I think we got the fastest car on the track, and, you know, I was a little bit confused with uh, when the 95, uh, you know, went loose. I break so hard and I did not touch him, but, you know, uh, Labi get inside of me. And I thought it was, the, you know, the last, the, last green car, the last green flag. So I was supposed to be first. That's what he said on the meeting. But, you know, that's NASCAR rules. I'm going to take a second place. On my team, you know, sponsor, you know, thank you. We, we're so far away from our home and we got a podium. We're going to win one and, uh, until the end of the season, believe me. Idle Teach, another solid run tonight. There's something to be said about excited English French as Alex LeBay being presented one of the coolest trophies I've seen. The Luxor 300 from Edmonton International Raceway has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow on Honey of a Lube. We'll head back to the street circuits for the next race, the Can-Am La Sancon Tour, a Grand Prix to 20 Vieira right now, though. That man and that team will celebrate. These race teams have earned the weekend off, Dave. For Adam and Todd, I'm Dave Bradley. Thanks for watching NASCAR on TSN. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.